Good evening, everyone. Let's welcome you in Jesus' name and greet you once again for our series of Cross and Crown. We are finishing the series this evening. It is the 25th day, and honestly, I think we have all been blessed by the word that God has imparted into our lives. Amen. So I just want to welcome you this evening once again to join with us and uh, be part of this um, meditation that we have had on the cross and crown. The cross and the crown, it comprises of everything that Jesus Christ did for you and me. Amen. He paid the price for us and he's given us this great gift of glory. Hallelujah. So before we get into the word of God, I just want you to join with me for a moment. Let's humble ourselves in God's presence and um, ask the Holy Spirit of God to come and minister to us. He's the one who teaches us, guides us. He's the one who counsels us. Amen. So join with me. Let's uh, seek the Lord's face this evening. Father, we bless you, God. We thank you. We worship you. Mighty and awesome God, we bless you, Father. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, God. You're a good God. We thank you, Father God, Master, that your hand has been upon each of our lives, Master. Thank you for this great new day that you have given us, Master God. Lord, you brought us into a whole new month, O oh God, the fourth month of the year, and for that we thank you for your faithfulness, O oh God. Lord, this evening we just want to ask you, Lord God, for your presence in our midst. Holy Spirit of God, that you would come and minister to us, O oh God. I humble myself before you. Lord, in spite of who I am, O oh God, I pray, Holy Spirit, you would come and take over, and Lord, you would minister to your people. I pray, God, that every heart be connected to you this evening. Lord, that you may minister to them. Lord, strengthen them. Help them live, Lord, a power-packed life in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you glory, praise, and honor. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, this evening that you move into the hearts of people. Lord, that you convict them, O oh Father God, this evening. Bring them to the cross. Give them salvation in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray, O oh Master God, that the power of the anointing of Jesus Christ fill their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, people of God, um, greet you once again in Jesus' name and want to take you uh, a few moments to dwell on this word of God. God has given me the caption for this evening's message. Uh, it's the final week and we have been talking on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Resurrection, that is the whole pivot upon which our Christian faith stands. So I just want to... I'll share with you the word that God has put in my heart this evening and I believe that it would be a blessing for you and me. Hallelujah. So I want to caption today's message as the resurrection power. Amen. People of God, Jesus offered himself for us for the sins of the world. As a great high priest, he presented himself on the altar for you and me. Hallelujah. But we often wonder, people might ask, did God accept that sacrifice? I tell you this evening, the open grave that we see. We're coming up to the uh, celebration of the Resurrection Sunday. And we're celebrating the open grave. Hallelujah. The grave in which Jesus Christ was once laid. It is now empty. And that is what we fix our faith and hope on. Amen. The empty tomb, it declares that Jesus was accepted by the Father. Paul also writes... He says to us in Romans chapter 4 and verse 25, Who was delivered for our offenses, Jesus Christ, and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. You and me are justified in the presence of God because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Justification. You and me have the right to stand in the presence of God this day. The resurrection is the visible evidence, people of God, that God the Father accepted Jesus on our behalf. Amen. In place of you and me going through such agony, Jesus took our place. He died, he was buried, and he is resurrected. Amen. The purpose and the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 17 to 19. We read here, it says, And if Christ had not been raised, then your faith is futile. Amen. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, then we are of all people the most pitiable. People of God, if Christ wasn't raised from the dead, where would you and me be? We would be still stuck in our sins. Also Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul just 
shares with us his heart because he came to know the power of the living God. Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. People of God, there's a purpose. There is the purpose for which Jesus rose from the dead. And there is a power that is made available to you and me through his resurrection. We need to know both the purpose and the power, exactly as Paul has prayed. Amen. He said, I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to know him personally. And I want to know the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection, his primary desire. People of God, this evening, can you and me have that as our primary desire? To know our Creator, to know the Savior who shed His blood for you and me, to know Him personally. That should be the cry of our heart. To know Jesus personally and to know His power by which we live. Amen? Let's get it right this evening. If we are not living a power-packed life, if we are not living in the Spirit, Amen? Then we need to ask God like Paul did, Lord, help me to know you more personally, Jesus. Help me to know your power, that I may live my life well, O oh God. That I may live it abundantly, O oh Master. You and me, people of God, Jesus came to the earth. He came in a bodily form. He walked with you and me, with the people of those days. He had a body. And you and me also have a body, a human body. But our bodies are destined to go back into the dust. Amen. We are just earthen vessels, people of God. We are just earthen vessels. And what do we see of earthen vessels? It's so likely to break. For any of you listening all over the world this evening, I'm sure you have all come into contact with pottery. And you know how delicate pottery can be. Amen. You've got to handle it with such care because pottery is likely to break. We are just mud. We are just dust made from dust. But we have a power in us, people of God. This is what I want to share with you this evening, the power of resurrection. We may be just earthen vessels. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus might be manifest in our body. People of God, as Paul says, we are troubled on every side. How come we are still standing? We are persecuted. How come we are still standing? Because it is the power of God that is living in you and me. Amen. We are not falling down and lying down. Each time we fall down, this power picks us up. It is a power that gives us strength. It is a power that gives life to you and me. Amen? Power is a well-tossed around word these days. Everything is power. You see, if you switch on the television, there's some advert, advert coming on which says, oh, this is the most powerful thing that you can use. Power. You can see it in all forms. You can see it in the animal kingdom. You can see it in the insect kingdom. You can see it in humankind. Amen? And humankind, sometimes we misuse power. But today, people of God, I'm going to talk about a different power. Amen? Power that cannot be manipulated. Amen? Power that cannot be bought or sold. It is the power that is redemptive. It is the power that is life-giving. Hallelujah? The power that I'm talking to you about to you this evening is the third person of the Trinity and he is the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. That's what Paul says. The power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and lives in me. What a privilege for us to call ourselves Christian. If we have this power, if we are able to recognize the power that is living within us, then it is such a great privilege. People of God, you and me would be living such a power packed life, such a powerful life. Amen. To all who believe in Jesus Christ and are baptized into him, this power is made available to them. Hallelujah. This power enables you to live victoriously. Amen. 
because Jesus came. He won the battle. He died on the cross. He defeated Satan. Amen. He defeated the devil. He defeated death. He defeated every disease. He's finished the work for you and me. And he gave us the power, the comfort of the Holy Spirit that he would dwell in us. That you and me can live life victoriously. Hallelujah. We are approaching Resurrection Sunday just a day away. It's coming with, we're having Saturday tomorrow and then Sunday. And people are excited. Everyone's, you know, especially after the pandemic, people are looking forward for something to celebrate. And all over the world, people are going, you know, crazy. Preparing for Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. People call it by different names. But I tell you, it is the best day of, for a Christian in their lives. Because our faith hangs on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what I want to share this with you this evening, people of God. So what if Jesus was raised from the dead? So what about the resurrection power? I believe God, people that, uh, God has put a word in my heart. Even as you go into Sunday to celebrate this beautiful resurrection day, I believe God wants to let you know that he's, he wants to empower your life. Amen. I'm going to take you back to the very first scene that happened. The very first, you have it recorded in all four gospels about the scene of the resurrection, the actual happening at the resurrection. Amen. And what does this resurrection power do for you and me? I want to give you three points, just simple three points this evening and to strengthen you to put, you know, power back into your life. The very first thing the power of the resurrection could do in your life, it would open your closed tombs. Amen. Amen. Your tomb will be opened and your darkness will be turned to light. Read with me from Mark chapter 16 verses 1 to 6. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was so large, had already been rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they have laid him. I'm reading every verse to you people of God this evening because I want to take you back to that actual happening on that day. The achievement of the resurrection, if you have read carefully with me this evening, the the actual happening of the resurrection, it took place before sunrise. It was so fitting that God, who was to scatter darkness in your life and in my life and all over the world, should rise from that tomb while darkness still covered the earth. And he proclaimed himself as light. Amen. No human eye could behold how the dead was raised. The earthquake and the descent of the angel rolling away the stone it was after the tomb was empty. If you read carefully, you will understand that. Amen? It was not that Jesus came and pushed open the stone, the, the door to the grave. No. He was risen inside the tomb. Hallelujah. That's the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. The greatest miracles, people, are often done in the darkest moments. Amen? Amen. No one knows and no one knows when to watch. We think everything has gone into darkness. I have to wait for the light to do something. But I tell you, people of God, even though you and me don't know it, even though you and me can't feel it or see it, know one thing that he is always at work. God is always at work in you and me. Amen. He is in charge of this entire universe, people of God. You and me, people of God, we need to understand that this God never sleeps, never slumbers. We've got a mighty God whom we worship. Hallelujah. He's the one who's constantly got his eye on you and me. If it is not you and me, it is somebody else who needs to be attended to. People of God, and he never takes his eye away from you. He's watching you constantly. He's working for you constantly. His power is made available to you and me. Hallelujah. This tomb, people of God, had been closed with a large rock. Mark 16 and verse 3 to 4. It says it had been sealed by the authority of the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. 
But when the women were approaching, they were so surprised to see that the tomb was already empty. People of God, this evening I just want to tell you, just like these women who went to that tomb that morning, they went there with spices, they went there to see a dead body in the tomb. That is what tombs are meant for, amen? Tomb is meant to contain a dead body. It is meant to have something put in and sealed. And that's exactly what they did. Because no one goes in to take out the dead again. And this evening, people of God, what is it that you and me are facing? You and me need to know what are the things that have gone into a tomb in our lives. Amen? Something that has been buried. Something that you think is finished. But it was actually promised to you. Something that has been put in a tomb. Just as those women went with the anticipation to see a dead body, to attend and do just a ritual, they went just to do a ritual, people of God. But when they got there, they found that they didn't have to do anything. It was already done. You have to be very careful when you read the scriptures because it says, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, it was already happened. Jesus was already raised. And then the angel came from heaven and rolled away the stone. This evening, people of God, God is going to send his angel into your situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Just because Jesus has resurrected, just because Jesus, the power that raised him from the dead is available to you and me. Mm -hmm. This evening, if you're willing, you can ask God, God, this is my situation, God. Everything has gone into a burial, Lord God. Everything has been, you know, covered and sealed, God, and nothing is happening. God, send me your angel that he may remove the stone. And God is going to do that for you this evening. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, God loves you so much. He loves you. And that's the reason, whole reason why he came to the earth. So that he can love you and give you a life worth living. Amen. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us know that song? I think even a child will sing that song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And this tomb, people of God, is empty. And this evening, I just want to tell you that this tomb is emptied for your sake and my sake. Amen. There's no more anything dead in that tomb. And what was in the tomb, people of God, when something goes into a tomb, it is complete darkness. I just looked up what is the difference between a tomb and a grave. And they said the tomb is on, built on top of the surface of the earth and the grave generally goes underneath. But both are shrouded in darkness. Mm. Amen. Whether you're put in a grave or whether you're put in a tomb, your situation is just the same. It is shrouded in darkness. Amen? And what are you facing this evening? Is it something, some situation that has been buried and everything is dark? Mm -hmm. There is no hope. Amen? There is no hope for you for your situation. But Jesus wants to tell you this evening that his power, the resurrection of the uh, power of Jesus Christ is filling your life this evening. Your darkness is being changed into light. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the message of hope, people of God. This is what the resurrection did for those people on that day. And the resurrection power is available to you and me today to do the very same thing. Amen. Amen. Resurrection power. Hallelujah. Greatest miracles. Greatest miracles. God did it when nobody was aware of it. Amen. Nobody saw Jesus actually rising from the grave. He was risen in the grave. He came out. Power that went into Jesus. This Holy Spirit of God raised him from the dead. Amen. Amen. God the Father must have said to the angels, Now go get my son. He has finished his work. Amen. Because Jesus went into the underworld, people of God. He defeated death. <clears throat> he defeated every enemy of you and me. And he came out victorious. He had the keys in his hand. Once more, he had the keys of the kingdom. Once more, people of God, Jesus was able to take the keys out of the hands of the enemy. And you and me are invited into that kingdom today. We are invited into the kingdom of God. Amen. Satan tried his very best to take you and me out of the kingdom of God. To show us a kingdom that is not fit for you and me. Amen. Hell was created not for you and me, people of God. It was created for the devil and his angels. 
and the devil thought that he would take you and me captive and put us into his kingdom. But Jesus Christ has set us free this evening. Amen. Amen. Your tomb shall be opened. Your situations shall be changed. Your darkness shall be turned into light. Amen. Amen. Because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And the second thing I want to share with you this evening. What this resurrection power is able to do in your life. Your enemies will fall down like dead men. Amen. Amen. That is the word people God gave me this when I was preparing. He just said, your enemies will fall like dead men. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Enemies, people of God, enemy can be in any form. But I tell you this evening, because of the res resurrection of Jesus Christ, your enemy shall be fallen like a dead man. Amen. Let's read together. Matthew chapter 28 verses 2 and 3. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, he rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. I want you to remember the scene, people of God. The very next verse says, And the guards who were standing there trembled. They trembled, they shook with fear, and fell like dead men. That was because they experienced the power that was present at the tomb. Amen. Amen. Every power came from within that tomb. Amen. Amen. When you put something into the tomb, people of God, it is lifeless. It is dead. There is no power. There is no life. But Jesus Christ was resurrected in that very same tomb. Hallelujah. Amen. And he came out victoriously, people of God. And the angel of God came and sat and rolled away the stone. And the soldiers, they just could not understand what was happening. The earthquake, the body shook. They were just taken with so much of fear. They fell down like dead men. What happened? Just the very sight of the angel made them tremble. They didn't see Jesus actually rising out of that tomb. Jesus had already risen. They just looked when the angel came and made the proclamation, he is not here. They experienced the earthquake. They experienced the moving stone. People of God, your enemy is going to experience Amen. this stone moving in their life. Amen. They thought that they had taken a position in your life. They thought, the enemy thought that if I've come and stood at the side of you and said, this is my stand. Mm. I have got control of your life. And I'm telling you this evening, people of God, that stone, that position that your enemy has taken in your life is being moved. Amen. Amen. He will fall down like a dead man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This stone, that position that the enemy thought that he has taken in your life. He thought he has sealed it with cement. He thought, you know, he has put a seal on the tomb. And he said it is finished. They thought Jesus' story is finished. The same thing the enemy is doing in some of your lives this evening. You who were liberated by Christ, you who were set free by Christ, your life for some reason has changed. Your life isn't changed at the moment and the enemy is just standing there, <coughs> taking his position. But I tell you this evening, he's watching the stone roll away. Amen? Amen. And because of that, he is trembling and falling at your feet like a dead person. Hallelujah. If you want to claim it, claim it in Jesus' name, I say. Amen. They experienced the arrival of the heavenly messenger and it put them into so much of disarray. They did not know what was happening. It was too fearful for them to remain even conscious. The enemy of God, Satan, has planned his wicked scheme right from the very beginning, the very birth of Jesus into this world. The enemy always wanted to get at the kingdom of God. People of God, you know the enemy, Satan, right from the time that he misled Adam and Eve, he thought, this is my kingdom. I reign the entire world. I reign the entire earth now. Amen? <clears throat> who's the prince of the world? People of God, if Sunday school children, you're listening, you know very well who's the prince of the world. That is Satan. He thinks that he's got his kingdom established. 
But I tell you in Jesus' name, his kingdom is not established. He is a defeated foe. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't go following a defeated foe. In the name of Jesus, I tell you this evening, don't run after a crowd. Don't run after somebody who's defeated. Run after the leader. Run after the one who's running after the heavenly things in Jesus' name. Don't run after Satan this evening, I tell you. He's a defeated foe. All he can show you is the pleasures, but he hides the price tag and he will drag you into the fires of hell. So I warn you this evening, people of God, do not follow the defeated foe. Know in your hearts this evening that Jesus is the one who is alive and resurrected and living for you and me. Hallelujah. The people of God wanted to, dis the enemy wanted to destroy Jesus forever, right from the time he was born into this world. Do you remember when Herod gave the order for every child under two years old to be, to be killed? He thought he would have Jesus in that group. But the Lord God Almighty protected Jesus. Amen? Amen. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he was fasting. Satan came to Jesus and he thought, I'm going to spoil this entire plan of God. I'm going to make Jesus come away from the plan that God has set for him. And Satan went to Jesus and said, Oh Jesus, I will give you the entire world if you only fall down and worship me. He tried every scheme with Jesus, people of God. The enemy tried every scheme with Jesus so that he could defeat Jesus and defeat the kingdom of God. But Jesus used the word of God and he said, You shall worship the Lord your God only. And the enemy was defeated. When Jesus was doing his ministry, Jesus was doing a beautiful ministry on the face of the earth. And one of his own disciples, Satan used Peter to rebuke Jesus when Jesus told them about his impending death. And Peter said, Master, this cannot happen to you, Master. Peter didn't know, but he uttered the words. And Satan was using Peter as an instrument to make Jesus deviate from the plan of God. But Jesus immediately recognized what Peter said and he said, get behind me, Satan. Amen. People of God, Satan is a deceiver. Mm. He'll come with the sweetest of words and whisper to you and me. Amen. Mm. He makes things conducive so that you and me can fall into sin. But this evening I want to tell you, beware of the works of the enemy. He's a scheming liar. Amen. Mm. He is called the father of lies, people of God. Be aware of him. Amen. He will take you. He'll whisper the sweetest things in your ears and deviate you from the plan of God. Have your spirit alive so that you'll be able to know the voice of the enemy and the voice of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The other thing that Satan used to try and put an end to the life of Jesus. These are all I'm talking about the enemy. The enemy that was placed in front of Jesus. Satan used the religious people and the high priest in those days to hate Jesus. Why did they hate Jesus so much? They just wanted to put an end to Jesus. They hated Jesus because of the claims that Jesus made that I am the Messiah. This went against the entire authority. The religious people, the Jews, they thought, the high priest, they thought he was a supreme being on earth. But Jesus said, I am the Messiah, and they didn't like it. They hated the very deeds that Jesus did. What did Jesus do? He healed the demon-possessed people. And the high priest could not handle it. They wanted to put an end to Jesus because of his deeds. Jesus was also a threat to their religious beliefs, to their religious understanding and systems. Everything was done in a religious fashion. They had no real regard for God. And Jesus went into that temple. Jesus is the one who's the author of the temple. He went into the temple that day. And he saw the way that they had made the temple a den of thieves. They were buying and selling in the house of God. People of God, you and me need to be aware of what we do in the house of God this evening. When we go into the house of God, what do we speak? What do we share? What do we look at and comment at each other? What are the ways that we are selling in the house of God? People of God, let's not make the house of God a den of thieves. Amen. The devil is the one who comes to steal and kill and destroy. 
He's a thief. Don't let him enter into the house of God. Be aware when you come into the house of God, what you talk about, what you comment on, what you listen to, what do you give and take, what do you buy and sell. It is not a place for business. It is a sanctuary of the Holy One. Amen. And when Jesus went into the temple that day, he was so moved to sadness. He was angry, the Bible says. Mm. He saw them selling oxen and sheep and goat and doves. He was so pained in his spirit that the house of God would become a den of thieves. He turned over the tables of the money changers. He drove, drove them all out. He used the whip, the Bible says. People of God, the Spirit of God is asking you this evening, should he be coming with a whip? Amen. to you and me to correct us in our spiritual lives the enemy tried everything he used these religious people he used the high priest to destroy Jesus because they could not understand who he was mm -hmm. because they could not tolerate the person whom Jesus Christ was what he stood for and what he spoke and what he did they just wanted to destroy him and they could not stand the way Jesus socialized with the people whom they looked down to. Mm. Jesus went to the lost. Jesus went to the sinners. He went to the tax collectors. Why? Because he said, I came to seek and save the lost. The sick need a doctor. People of God, the religious people, they could not tolerate what he was doing. They wanted to put an end to Jesus' life. They wanted to put an end to the kingdom of God. Mm. That was Satan's plan. They didn't know that they were pawns in the hand of Satan. And you and me, people of God, this day, what are we doing? Are we like those people? They thought, we will put Jesus to death. We will get rid of this person. He doesn't fit into our society. He doesn't fit into our systems. He's like a thorn in our sides. Satan was so ferocious, he wanted to finish up Jesus. And that's why they got him crucified. They shouted crucify him and Jesus was crucified and put into the tomb. It's true, it happened. He was put into the tomb. The enemy stood outside the tomb. They were still not so sure. The irony of this is they wanted to get him all along while he was living. They tried every scheme. The enemy tried every scheme. They got him not with their schemes, but Jesus gave up his own life on the cross for you and me. Amen. Let's get that very clear. It's not that they put him to death. It's not that they killed Jesus. Jesus went to the cross for you and me willingly. Amen. Amen. He took your sin upon himself and then he died. And so they have this body of Jesus now in the tomb. And it is sealed. And they've put guards outside. And they said, it is finished. We are done with this man. Let's put a guard outside, let's seal the tomb, and the story is finished. They were scared of a dead man. People of God, what are you and me scared about this evening? Something that is dead? Something that you think is going to happen because of something, something somebody has done? The soldiers trembled, the soldiers trembled and they fell like dead men, people of God. Let me tell you, if you and me are washed in the blood of the Lamb and filled with his resurrection power, mm. the enemy will not be able to stand against you. Let him try any scheme against you, people of God. Let him try anything. No one thing in your heart this evening. You may be a threat to the modern beliefs of this day. You may be a threat to the systems they believe in. To the way people function, you may be a threat to them and they want to get rid of you. They can't tolerate you standing for the truth. They can't tolerate the way you handle things by the grace of God. And they say, oh, they don't fit in with us. Let's get rid of them. The enemy wants to shut you up. The enemy wants to put you in a tomb and seal you. The enemy wants to see that you're defeated. But people of God this evening, I don't know who I'm speaking to. The enemy wants to get rid of you, but Jesus says this evening, because he is resurrected, because of his resurrection power, he says, you are not going to remain in the tomb. Amen. Hallelujah. Your enemy will be defeated. 
because of what the Lord has done for you and me. The stone, he is watching the stone moving by the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that will make him fall like a dead man. Amen. I want to share with you the third point. What does the resurrection do for you and me? Your sorrow will be turned into joy. Hallelujah. Sorrow turned into joy. Matthew chapter 28 verses 5 to 8. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. And they ran to tell the disciples. Dear of God, if you and me see Jesus merely dying on a cross and being buried in the tomb, there is absolutely no hope for you and me. No forgiveness of sins. No healing from every disease. But it is his resurrection that gives you and me the power, the assurance that Jesus has overcome death and won a great victory for you and me. It's the resurrection, people of God, that makes all the difference in your life and in my life. Amen. I want to give you a small illustration. And this is, it just, you know, I was just so happy when I read this illustration. I get all this from little books. People throw them away, but when I find an old book, I always love to pick them up and read it. I love to read. And I came across this. It is a well-known incident in England. After the Battle of Waterloo in June 1815, all England was waiting for news about the outcome of the campaign. The Duke of Wellington had opposed Napoleon Bonaparte in this battle. Of course, this was long before the telegraph or telephone or television. And so in those days, watchers were placed along the coast to read the semaphore. The semaphore means the flag signal. In those days, that's all the signal that they had. No telegraph or telephone or telegram, nothing. So they placed them. They had people stationed along the coast to read them. The flag signals from the very first returning of the sailing vessels. It was a cloudy, foggy day. But finally, one watcher was excited. He spied a vessel sailing into the coast and he began reading a signal message. And the message read, Wellington defeated. And he spread. It was a cloudy day, foggy day. He took the message straight away. He relayed the message all across England and the nation was gripped by fear, discouragement and defeat. Hours later, however, the fog lifted and the entire message appeared. It said, Wellington defeated the enemy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Discouragement was banished, people of God, and the nation rejoiced in the good news. Hallelujah. I tell you, people of God, this story perfectly relays what you and me have to enjoy today because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's perfectly illustrates a state of mind that the disciples, the women, would have experienced. Because the disciples, the women, all who were with Jesus, they have heard everything that Jesus said while he walked the earth with them. Jesus said he had come to seek and save the lost. Jesus said he came to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus said he had come so that his people might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, whoever was thirsty, let them come to me and they could be refreshed. All positives. Jesus said, whoever would follow him would never walk in darkness, but would have the light of life. And Jesus said that he who goes to him will have eternal life. All positives, people of God and his disciples rallied around him. What a positive leader we have. What a positive message to live by. What positivity we have in our hearts. What hope. But on that day that Jesus was crucified, that hope was completely smashed. Everything was defeated. They're standing now at the tomb and they're wondering, 
Where has all this gone? Jesus is dead and buried. Mm. I tell you people of God, the disciples did not have the least inkling to believe that Jesus would rise. Amen. They did not believe it. Jesus told them about it, but it was something beyond their understanding. It was a terrible day, people of God. When Jesus died, the noon sun suddenly disappeared and everything became frighteningly dark. You know when there's darkness and you're going through a situation, it seems even more terrible. You can't get out of the situation. You can't wait for every minute to crawl by. And you want to see the light. And that was what was happening with the disciples and the women who went to see Jesus' body. But when they went there, there was this big earthquake. And all these events took place. They looked. They went into the tomb to look for Jesus' dead body, but they could not find anything. But then, on that Easter morning, they went in and when they couldn't find Jesus, they, they knew they came to an understanding. It says John ran in and he went and saw inside the tomb. It says John saw and believed. Amen. 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 John believed the entire message of Jesus Christ that Jesus is in fact risen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, I want to share with you this evening. Do not have half faith. Amen. Get the message clear this evening. Don't read half message. Amen. Do not be like what happened in the time of England at the battle. When they could only read half message because of the fog. That they had been defeated. But the entire message says the enemy has been defeated. Hallelujah. And I want to ask you this evening to believe in your heart. And to take it into your spirit this evening. That the full message is. The enemy has been defeated Amen. because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God, let's get the fog out of our eyes. Amen. Let us pick up the word of God this evening. Let us read with clarity. Ask the Holy Spirit of God who is our teacher. Amen. The one who counsels you. The one who teaches you. Jesus said he will lead you unto all truth. Hmm. Pick up your Bible and read people of God. Don't live in a fog. Amen? Amen. Your enemy will have the upper hand. But I ask you this evening, clear the fog in Jesus' name. Amen. God is here this evening. He wants to clear that fog. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit of God fill you. Let the resurrection Amen. power of God fill you in such a way that you live the complete message of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the one who is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. He has defeated your enemy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, this God has done everything for you on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. He died for you. He was buried, but he's risen and alive again. Hallelujah. Amen. Your enemy is defeated. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. That is the complete message. People of God, he is alive so that you and me can be alive. Hallelujah. That is the message I want to share with you this mm. evening, people of God. Your enemy is defeated. Your tomb has been opened. There is light instead of darkness. Amen. Amen. And God is saying to you this evening, he says, I will turn your sorrow into joy. Amen. Because when, the, when Mary and the women and the disciples were going, they were filled with this sorrow. Wondering, what on earth are we going to do? Our master, the one who led us, the one who gave us such hope, is dead and buried. And they were filled with sorrow. What are we going to do? People of God, is that your situation this evening? Are you filled with sorrow? What about all the promises that God has given you? Mm. What about all the things that you had hope on? Amen. Is it not happening anymore? Is it clouded with fog again? That you are sorrowful in your spirit. Mm. People of God, the spirit of God wants to enliven your spirit this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants to turn your sorrow into joy. Amen. He wants to give you the complete message that Jesus Christ is Amen. risen. And his power is available in you and me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are baptized in his name, the power of the living resurrection of Jesus Christ is available to you. Amen. Amen. And that is the reason why John wrote, he said, I write all these things so that you may believe mm -hmm. and know the power of the resurrection of Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the message I wanted to share with you this evening, people of God. We are going to celebrate another Easter morning, another resurrection morning. Amen. Amen. Let us not be sorrowful in our spirit anymore. Let us receive it. Let us receive the complete message into our spirit and live with hope. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
May God bless you this evening, people of God, because he wants to share, wants to put into your spirit the power mm. that raised him from the dead is given unto you. Hallelujah. Receive it in faith this evening and Thank be blessed. You. You, you live your life triumphantly. Mm. Jesus triumphed over the cross. Amen. Amen. He triumphed over death. He triumphed over the enemy. He defeated the devil. Mm. He defeated death. Mm. He defeated every disease. Thank you, There's Jesus. nothing, nothing that he has left undone. Thank you, Jesus. May God bless you. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ fill you. Turn your sorrow into joy. Let it open your closed tomb and bring you light. Amen. Amen. And let your enemy tremble and fall at your feet in Amen. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. Receive this message in faith. Mm. And rejoice as you celebrate the Resurrection Sunday. Mm. Amen. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise and honor, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. We thank you, Master. Lord, for the power of your resurrection, Lord Amen. Jesus. Lord, we thank you that your life for Master God, Lord, is embedded in us, O God. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Hallelujah. Let the power of the Christ, O Master, the Amen. anointing, the power of Jesus Christ fill each and every life this evening, God. Amen. Lord, I pray, O Master God, every enemy be defeated in their lives, O God. Amen. Every death, O Father God, Master, be... Lord, done with them, Lord. Let there be a resurrection in their Thank lives, O God. Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name, Father God and Master. Lord, that every sorrow be turned to joy, O Father. Amen. Lord, I bless them in Jesus' name. Lord, let them run with this hope, O Master God. Let Amen. them run with a complete message that Amen. it is finished. And Jesus is alive. Mm. The enemy is defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless your people, O Master. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.